If you're thinking of selling digital images online, you've probably thought of stock photography. But one of the questions you might be trying to answer is whether you can earn very much or whether it's just not worth it. In this video, I'll be sharing my experience with earning passive income online on Shutterstock as a contributor, including total earnings to date, average earnings per download, which images have sold, and other great stuff which can be hard to find online with some good analysis. Like I normally do with my earnings videos, I need to touch upon a few things so that you know how you can apply what I've experienced to your scenario. I should also point out that this information is for helping you and anyone else who is looking to earn online. It's not exactly an enormous sum to be gloating about, and I wouldn't do that even if it was. So my portfolio consists of these images, where in total there are 161 assets, where most are based on engineering illustrations that symbolize mechanical stress in a component. I'm actually an engineer, which is why I'm familiar with these images, and I'd say that these are quite niche. And you can hopefully understand that if we search the customer facing Shutterstock website for finite element analysis, that's what these illustrations are known as, you'll see that there are just several pages found. Now compare that to when we use cats as the search term and you'll see that there are far more search pages returned. Lastly, before we get into the answers of the juicy questions, assets were first uploaded in December 2016, some more in 2017 and then a little bit more in 2019. That's when most of the portfolio was uploaded and then nothing more since. I've been rather lazy with uploading, whereas you might be more proactive, giving you greater earning potential. I'll comment later on with some of the graphs on how consistent and stable the earnings were with the little effort that I've put in. So I've shown you my portfolio, but which of them sold? Well, Shutterstock has a good dashboard and we get a comprehensive earnings summary. We have this thing called top performers down near the bottom of the page. So if we scroll down a bit, then click that text that says view all top performers. This takes us to a page which orders our assets in terms of which ones earn the most. The page shows you how much each asset has earned over a time frame that you specify, the total downloads for the asset, and you also get information on which keywords led customers who downloaded these assets to that asset. The percentage split of each keyword is additionally given. For example, this second image had the keyword FEM, which stands for finite element method, which led to 100% of these downloads. The first image, by contrast, had the keyword FEM lead to just 4.6% of the downloads. Now there are four pages of data on this. And it could well be interesting to you, but I think there's a better way to describe this data. And that's through two graphs, this being the first one. Now don't worry if you don't like maths and graphs, I'll take you through it nice and easy. The y-axis, that's this line here, shows how much each asset contributed to my lifetime earnings. The x-axis represents all of my assets. Number one is the highest earning asset over the lifetime and number 161 shows the worst earning asset and everything in between is in order from highest to lowest. Makes sense? Of course it makes sense. All of you beautiful subscribers are smart cookies. So the best earning asset is this bar here and this shows that the best performing asset is responsible for almost 16% of the total earnings I've received from Shutterstock. Just one image this one. We can add the rest of the bars in and you get an interesting pattern. And that is that the drop off in how much each asset has contributed towards the total earnings. It looks like the images past number 73 don't contribute anything towards my total earnings. The second graph to show you the performance of my portfolio is as follows. Our x-axis, so this one, stays the same, but our y-axis has changed to cumulative contribution of assets towards the lifetime earnings. And don't worry, I'll explain how that works when I plot the curve. The plot looks like this, and we can extract some useful statistics from it when we draw it like this. For example, if I consider the point asset 20, I'd be adding the earning contributions of asset 1, 2, 3, 4, so on, all the way up to asset 20. I then move upwards with my cursor on the asset 20 line until I hit the curved line. I can then read across horizontally to tell me how much of my total earnings those 20 assets contributed, which turns out to be 82%. Now that's an interesting statistic that just 20 assets contribute 80% of my earnings 
That's just 12% of my portfolio. You can pick other numbers too, like the top 10 assets, which contributed to 63% of the total earnings. Right, so we've looked at the portfolio with percentages of the total earnings, but what are the lifetime earnings up to? Well, since I've been on Shutterstock, I've earned just $553.45, receiving 849 downloads. That gives an average earning per download of 65 cents, and with with 161 images in my portfolio, the average earning per image is $3.44. Spoiler alert, this is lower than with Adobe stock, and there'll be a link to that video down in the description. Now we can process this data in a few different ways, including yearly earnings, average earnings over time, and earnings by subscription source. So let's do that. Disappointingly, earnings have declined year on year, but we do need to factor in that I've not added much more to my portfolio and the competition has grown a bit. And with my niche images, there are a lot of new ones here. Something we have to address is that Shutterstock introduced levels for videos and images. This is a tiered structure where you earn more if you've received more downloads from 15% through to 40% of the effective sale price. Everything that I've shared is based on the level one tier and the introduction of this tiered system a year or two ago is probably partly responsible for the drop in yearly earnings. I think that the minimum sale price that I used to get was about 25 cents, but now I see sales of 10 cents come through. We can look at average earnings per month and see the disappointing decline in the average. That's this straight line here. And to be fair, it is quite a shallow decline. Note that these two spikes are when some big single sales came through. So these shouldn't be considered as expected or regular. We can also look at the average earnings per download month by month to see how stable it is. And we can in fact see that this is reasonably consistent and stable. This line here is the average across all of the months. Again, these two points have those single sales in, and so we should probably remind ourselves about the different types of packages customers can buy the images with. Okay, so here's how it works. Customers will sign up to a Shutterstock plan on the customer facing website. They'll find an image they like and then download it. Those downloads will appear in these product categories depending on the plan they have. For example, I might be a customer that chooses an enhanced license subscription and those downloads would appear here for images. The Shutterstock dashboard gives an earnings breakdown by customer payment options. With subscriptions, there were 600 95 downloads, which contributed 83% of all my downloads, which contributed $144.36, 27% of my lifetime earnings, on demand for 131 downloads and $227.84, single purchases giving $145.89, and cart sales with just one download giving $10.85, and finally one clip pack giving $15.20. Okay, so that was a ton of detailed analysis. But how can you apply this information? Number one, cast a bigger net by putting as many photos as you can on Shutterstock. This chart here that showed us 20% of the images gave 80% of the earnings fits the Pareto principle, which is a really interesting phenomena. And I've seen something similar with Adobe stock. I strongly suspect that increasing your portfolio size will proportionally increase your earnings in order to keep this 80-20 guide across your portfolio in place. Number two, use this information as a crude yardstick. It's all too easy to be demoralized and not know how you're performing. Find your total earnings and divide that by your total downloads. I imagine many of you will be above my average of 65 cents per download. And try not to focus on this small number in isolation. Remember that stock photography is a numbers game. So this number doesn't matter so much as long as you get lots of downloads. Number three is to be cautious about the longevity of your assets. Perhaps continually uploading will help keep those earnings up. Just keep in mind that that approach might mean it's more difficult to scale. However, I would be concerned with a much bigger headwind with Shutterstock that could rock our earnings even further. And that's with this worrying update for contributors on Shutterstock where AI could be set to take over the roles of contributors. Check out this video to see what all the fuss is about.